If you were to look at a map of the northern United States through the Great Lakes region today, you will notice that we're experiencing an extremely low snow winter. As of the recording of this video, it's February 4th today when I'm recording this, and this map that you're looking at is what we're seeing for snow totals on the ground. This is a remarkably low snow winter, and I'll show you some of the data behind where this winter ranks, at least for the state of Minnesota. But just scanning over this, you can see that in the state of Minnesota, for example, if you were to draw a line from approximately Duluth over to Grand Forks, everything south of there is essentially snow free. That's the southern two thirds of Minnesota in early February is snow free. Now for the portion of the state to the north of that line in through the Arrowhead region up into north central and northwestern Minnesota, if we count the colors here you can see the white, the green, and the light blue. If you go to the legend you can see that we're looking at anywhere from zero to four inches of snow on a landscape level across the northern part of Minnesota, which is remarkably low for this time of year. Take a look at the state of North Dakota. The entire state is almost entirely snow free in early February. There's only a little bit of snow up here in the Red River Valley area. There's some other patchy areas of snow, but early February, essentially no snow in the entire state. Take a look at Southwestern Ontario. If you look at east of the Lake Nipigon region, all the way sweeping west through Lake Nipigon, through Dryden, Kenora, all the way over to Lake Winnipeg. Southwest Ontario has enormous swaths of no snow on the ground, which is just unbelievable. As we pan east towards the Great Lakes into Wisconsin and Michigan, again, we're seeing those really small snow total numbers, uh, up to four inches, isolated areas up in the UP, up by Houghton, some other isolated pockets of much deeper snow. But overall, just a remarkably low snow type winter. So much so that if you look at what the Minnesota DNR is telling us, this is their snow depth ranking map, Everything you see in brown on this map in the state of Minnesota represents a percentile ranking of 0 to 1, meaning a 99 to 100 winters up until this point would have had more snow on the ground than there is today at this point in time. Well, if you're struggling with deer browsing your young trees right now, it's the middle of winter, Feel free to check out the Browse Blocker website. You can order these there. It's just a simple, low cost way to keep deer off your young trees, especially pine trees when they're nipping them this time of year. Um, it, these will keep the deer off of your trees. Um, leave them on now through spring green up and take them off, save them. You can use them year after year and it'll protect your trees until you get them past the browse line when they're old enough. So if you're interested in these, you can learn more at the website. If you just go to browseblocker.com, you could type that in your URL. Otherwise, you can just click on the link down below in the description of the video. The time of this map was February 1st, 2024, when the map data was printed. But uh, said another way, this winter, this year, February 1st, 2024, has the lowest snow amount in the past 99 to 100 years in these areas shown in brown. You can see there is some red on this map and isolated pockets, some yellow. You can see where the, the rank lands for those areas here. But the vast majority of Minnesota, including the northern part of the state that, that sees deer mortality from severe winters, the northern part of the state, except this part here and this part, is experiencing the lowest snow in a hundred years. This past fall was the most timber wolves that we've ever seen at our hunting camp. Now we see wolves from time to time and we hear them howling most years, but this year we physically saw the most from our deer stands while we were deer hunting. Again, we're, we're deer hunting on the western side of the Arrowhead region where we gun hunt. So uh, this is wolf country that we're in, but a winter like this really levels the playing field for those wolves and deer. 
and you know in our opinion it's the wolves in the winters that really limit the deer up in the northern part of the state now if you get into some of these areas there's wolves in northern wisconsin and northern michigan as well and when you can get low snow winters like this you can really level the playing field uh, the trail cameras uh, also backed up what we were seeing with a lot of wolf sightings. We had wolves uh, hitting our mock scrapes and which they do uh, typically if deer are using your mock scrapes our wolf, or the wolves will come and check them out. They'll usually scrape and, and urinate by the scrapes as well. Let's take a look at how harsh some of the winters have been up until recently. I'm going to focus on the state of Minnesota right now but if you're in Wisconsin, Michigan, other parts of the country, you can look up your own winter severity index maps for your own states. But just to give you guys a sense of how historic this winter truly is, this is a map showing the winter severity index as of May 10th, 2023. So this was really at the end of the cold season, at the end of the spring, last spring. You can see all the areas in black represent 120 or higher on the winter severity index. Uh, the DNR says that we really start to see winter uh, deer kills, uh, winter mortality, just, just from the winter succumbing to exposure when that winter severity index gets over 100. So really the areas that you want to focus on are the pink, the purple, and the black and the legend here. And then as we look at the map, you can see really how extensive um, the damage was this last winter, especially if you're up in southern St. Louis, uh, all of Lake County, Cook Counties, uh, Carlton County, uh, the deer got absolutely hammered last winter by the deep snow and the cold temperatures. That's what this winter severity index is going off of. Uh, it gives points based on deep snow and extreme cold. You can look up the specifics if you wanna learn more about it, but that's how these point totals are gathered. As we pan across, we can see just tons of pink and black. Again, that's representing areas that saw winter whitetail kills last winter, just based on exposure. We look at Aiken, Itasca, Kuchiching counties, all got really severe winters, even into northern Beltrami, Hubbard, southern Clearwater, Becker Clay. We look up in the northwest portion of Minnesota last winter, some really, really tough areas for deer trying to survive the winter. Now, this is the winter before. This is May, as of May 18th, 2022. So this was two springs ago. This is where the winter severity index landed us. Again, you can see it's all focused in this extreme northern, north central, northwest, and northeastern part of Minnesota. Uh, two winters in a row, St. Louis County, Lake County, and Cook County have gotten absolutely hammered uh, the whitetails as far as winter mortality goes. Now that's not totally unexpected. I mean the, the Arrowhead region of Minnesota um, typically on average sees much or, or more snow than the rest of the state. So it's not totally uncharacteristic. But nevertheless, when we start seeing 120 or higher on the winter severity index, those are extremely hostile conditions for whitetails to try to survive the winter. Even look at Itas northern Itasca County, uh, that late winter of 22, Kuchichin County just devastating for the whitetails, even up into the northern, northwestern portion of Minnesota. Now, this is the winter severity index map for the spring of 2021. You can see what a light, light winter that was. This was the kind of winter that is going to help stop the declining deer numbers and level the playing fields for wolves. You can see that winter severity index just stayed extremely low uh, winter of 2021. And here is the winter severity index map for winter of 2020. April 15th, 2020 is when this map data was put out there. Um, looking at the winter severity, we can see we hit that 100 winter severity index when we hit the pink color here. Um, again, it's just, it's north central Minnesota, it's northeastern Minnesota. Um, you look at um, Lake County, unbelievable numbers in April of 2020, uh, southeastern St. Louis County, Lake County, southwestern Cook County. Look at some of these uh, WSI numbers. We're seeing 160 to 180 in, in this real dark red area. I mean, that's just 
uh, very, very difficult for whitetails to survive in this area anyways. Um, so the, the point with showing you this um, is just to give folks a sense of how hostile some of these previous winters have been. Three, four out of the last five winters have been very, very difficult for whitetails. And now this winter, when we start seeing things like this, it just goes to show how remarkably helpful this is going to be when it comes to trying to stop the declining deer herd numbers where we're at and, and where other folks are at um, in the northern areas that see winter mortality from winters and wolves. Um, it's really going to help us try to stop that decline in harvest and deer populations. If we look at recent deer harvest totals, again, I'm going to focus on the state of Minnesota, but you could pull this data for whatever state you're in. But at least here where we're at, it's been a really troubling decline in deer numbers and deer harvest for the past handful of years. Again, brought on by these really severe recent winters and the wolf population where it's at. The combination of those two things has really been hard on the whitetails. Of course, we're hunting them too, which takes deer off the landscape every year, but the winters and wolves are that factor above and beyond the harvest that really sways these numbers. If you compare harvest totals from one fall to another on some of these harvest reports, it's a sobering reality that you can see we're in a, a net decline for the past few years, just looking at what was harvested this year, 156,000 deer statewide. While that's down some from prior years, when you look at these northeastern and north central Minnesota deer permit areas, 130, 181, 118, 117, and the St. Louis, Lake County, Cook County areas, even over into uh, Carlton, Itasca, Kuchichin counties, it's a sobering reality when you start to compare some of the deer harvest totals where we're seeing 20 to 30 percent declines in recent years in some of these deer permit areas. Um, these severe winters have had a, a major, major toll on the whitetail herd, especially up here in the northern part of Minnesota. So that's why when we get a winter like this one, it's such a big deal because it's just leveling the playing field for these whitetails. And this could be the year where we finally stop that downward trajectory in deer population, at least in the 100 series permit areas of Northern Minnesota. We, we need to at least stop the decline. And if we can get another easy winter next winter, we could really start to see the population come back. That's the cool thing about whitetails and their populations is they are so resilient and they can rebound quickly, we know that. And the, the major deciding factor, at least in the northern parts where we see winter mortality and, and wolf populations, the major factor of where that deer population is going is the severity of the winter. And that's just going to result in less, less wolf predation this winter. Um, you know, does it mean that, that we're going to have triple the deer on the landscape next fall? No, of course not. But at least it could reverse this downward trend we're seeing in deer numbers. I'm a subscriber of the Minnesota Outdoor News. It's a weekly newspaper. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. I know Wisconsin and Michigan has their own versions of the Outdoor News. It's been really sad this year reading in there about all of the, the hunting camps in northeastern Minnesota, especially kind of the extreme 100 series permit areas that have, uh, some of those camps have actually stopped hunting in extreme cases and, and other camps just are not seeing the deer. But what they are saying is they are seeing more wolves than ever in their hunting areas. Now, of course, we know wolves and whitetails can coexist, but when the two populations get out of whack, it's especially painful for us whitetail hunters. And we're seeing that play out right now in northeastern Minnesota. I do want to stay positive. Again, the, the whitetail population is, is, the herd is so resilient. If we could get a couple of easy back-to-back -back winters, two or three of these in a row, we would see the deer herd really rebound. It can see exponential growth in the good old days can and will return. And I know they will for the time being, we just need to hunt smarter. We need to hunt harder 
And if you are able to harvest a buck for all those of you who harvested one this year in northern Minnesota and elsewhere in the northern Great Lakes reaches, you should really pat yourself on the back. I mean, you were able to harvest a deer that survived all odds the past five years, uh, survived wolves, survived winters. It was really a true survivor whitetail. So if you were able to harvest one, uh, that's commendable and you deserve a pat on the back. So going forward, I'm not gonna let this get me down or deter me a downward trend in deer population. I'm gonna stay positive and just hunt that much harder and hunt that much smarter and try to get it done each year. Thanks for watching everybody and I will catch you on the next one.